Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody, depending where you are listening from all around the world. Um, so my name is Chris Rogers. I'm a, I'm a technology evangelist here at, here at Zerto. Um, so yeah, so thanks for joining us. So today's going to be just, you know, an update session, um, you know, our Q4 update. Um, so a little bit kind of about what, what, why are we doing an update session? Normally we get like what's new in Zerto 10 or 9, whatever it may have been. So if you're not aware, um, so we've changed our, our kind of release schedule slightly here at Zerto. Um, so we're now doing quarterly updates. So you'll start seeing, you know, the, the software get shipped on a quarterly basis um, with, with, with more and more features, as I said, every quarter. So you'll see more and more of these things come through. So it will be calendar year, you know, so obviously we're in 2023 and we're in Q4. So essentially we're going to do kind of a, a roundup of what's happened in the last quarter across the Zerto and HPE data protection um, products. Uh, we'll give you guys an overview of, you know, of what, you can, what you can expect to see um, when, you, when you next upgrade. So kind of how do we get here? So where where are we now? So um, HP GreenLake and Backup and Recovery launched late 21, um, very early stages of that product when, when, when it was launched. And then we kind of skip over 22 and then we go to 23 when Zerto 10 launched earlier this year, earlier in May. And then um, just a little bit later than that, GreenLake for Disaster Recovery was launched. And then what we're going to talk about today is, is our latest updates. I'm just going to do a little quick summary of some of the Zerto 10 um, bits and pieces. Um, so if anyone's not familiar with, with 10, I know there's still many customers and partners and, and prospects out there still potentially on looking at older older versions. So I'm just going to kind of give you some highlights of Zerto 10 and then kind of what and build upon that for what happens in, in Q4 for, for 2023. So what did we bring out in, in Zerto 10? Well, real-time encryption detection was probably one of the biggest headline features that we had, um, if you're not aware of that. Um, we'll cover it on the next slide as well and a bit more detail but you know detecting encryption for, for you know pretty much for ransomware purposes in in near real time like we do with the, with the replication near real time encryption detection and then to kind of pair with that we've launched our cyber resilience vault so the zerto cyber resilience vault was born it's it's a kind of a, a conglomerate of zerto hpe and, and aruba um all coming together with their best in brief products to to provide you with a clean room or an isolating recovery environment and a data vault combined together to give you that ultimate protection from ransomware and, and ensure data survival we launched the the zerto um virtual manager appliance so the zvma if, if you see all of our our, our uh our um, documentation, things like that, but 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 essentially an OVF appliance to make it easier for you guys to to do everything you need to do, and also then protecting Azure at scale, and we'll go through some of those little bits and pieces as well. So so what does the replication look like? Or well, sorry, the detection look like? So as as you know, we're replicating changes every five to fifteen seconds in Zerto environments, and now what we're doing, we're adding inline encryption detection to that, and as you can see in here, we we're, we're this is the journal view that you know most of you would have seen before and if, if you're if you're new to Zerto, I'll point out a couple of things on, 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 on this slide here. So on the bottom left of that screenshot, you can see the total number of checkpoints we have for the day is 869. So that's how many points in time we can go back. So any point in time of those you can you can see they're five or ten seconds apart typically. We can go back to any of those points during the day. And then to add on top of this, we're now then detecting suspicious activity in those checkpoints so there we can see you know july 20th we can see here we've got 55646 so some suspicious activity was detected so what we can then do is tag that for you so you when you come into your recovery you can see when that activity started so you're not going to recover from that one or the two newer checkpoints you're going to go back to a potentially clean checkpoint and then there we've actually tagged a clean checkpoint for you um to, to, to go back to and say, yeah, okay, in this instance, you're going to lose 20 seconds worth of data, not the end of the world, but we're marking that clean checkpoint. So it gives you some idea of when you should be going back to. And now the cyber resilience vault architecture. So as I said, it's it's, it's a combination of the Zerto product that we that we have and, and everyone loves, um, HPE storage and compute, and then um, HP Aruba for, for the networking. I won't go into too much detail about, about the vault. We you know there's plenty of um, other webinars and, and, and papers and white papers and everything else around it. But essentially the core concept is that we're giving you a landing zone to land your data into. And then from there, we're giving you a fully air-gapped data vault. So the only connection is between two storage arrays. That's how replicating data into the vault. 
And then inside of the vault, we have a resilience automation server. So that manages things like port access, the air gapping and the immutability um, inside of the vault. And then inside the vault, we have compute, storage, networking, all production grade as well. So we're not looking at this as a, as a backup system, to, which is going to be slow disk. This is, you know, high performance, Electra MP um, is, is actually in the vault. HP ProLine compute to run your workloads on once they're in the vault. And then Aruba networking, obviously, to, to network <laughs> once you've got them on there. And inside the vault, we're actually recovering Zerto inside of there as well. So inside of when your recovery is ongoing from ransomware, you're recovering Zerto inside of that vault. So all of those run books, those automation orchestration that you've built into your into your systems using Zerto are still available to use. And then also, as we as I saw a moment ago, that encryption detection, those clean checkpoints are still available in there for you to see and view and recover to as well. So we're the only journal based um, vault solution on the market. So, you know, if you are in the market for a vault and you're looking for that extra level of protection against ransomware, you know, please check it out. Come visit our, our web pages or look at the look at the materials or, you know, leave a leave a question for us to, to contact you afterwards in the in the, in the question box. Um, and I think I did forget to say at the beginning, if you do have questions, please put them in the question box. We, we do have a um, hopefully we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, and, and, and if, if we don't have time, we always get the, the, a copy of the questions um, uh, sent to us and we'll get back to you with the answers um, as well if we don't manage to get to the, uh, get there. And the Zerto Virtual Manager Appliance, and again, I'm sure some of you have probably already deployed this um, or, or looking at it as well. Um, and, if, and if you are a customer who has got a Windows-based Zerto Virtual Manager, we have released uh, a migration utility. Um, I've used it many, many times. It's very easy to use, um, you know, less than five minutes to move um, from your Windows Zerto Virtual Manager across to the Linux-based appliance. It deploys quickly via OVF, as I mentioned before, and it is pre-hardened as well. So we, you know, we're limiting the scope of what you as an administrator or you as a user uh, needs to protect. We're, you know, we're protecting the OS and everything else in that package is dead down to Zerto to, to secure. So um, it comes with things like MFA and role-based access control, as you'd expect as well. And then simple, easy management. It's very easy to upgrade, download the newer one bring it up line, very, very simple. Troubleshooting becomes a lot easier because we haven't got to troubleshoot environmentals with your Windows-based system. You know, we know what, what packages and whatever and versions of everything is installed. So troubleshooting and support becomes a lot easier for that product as well. And as I mentioned in, 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 in the previous uh, section, we've actually enhanced our Zerto for Azure architecture as well. So beforehand, if, if, you, if you knew Zerto for Azure, or Azure, if you're American, um, we, we actually had a Zerto Cloud appliance, so the ZCA in there, which did the management and the replication piece all bundled into one appliance, uh, which was great. Um, and, it, and it served many of our customers many very well for many years. But one thing we heard from the market was actually we'd like to decouple that and have to be able to scale replication independently of management, which makes total sense. So we listened. And essentially now we have a Zerto Cloud appliance, which you can deploy one for a region. And then we can scale up and scale down the VRAs and they're automatically deport, deployed as part of the, uh, the automation orchestration when you install Zerto as well. So we've, we've essentially decoupled management from replication in there as well. So let's get on to our, our Zerto updates for, for, uh, for Q4. So we, what we've done uh, for uh, Azure in, in Zerto 10, we're actually followed the same suit for AWS now. So we've changed the architecture for, for AWS and we're having the same concept. So management with the Zerto Cloud Appliance and the separated replication appliance, the, virtu the vir virtual replication appliance is now separated from that management. And what does that give us? Well, it gives us you know, scale because the VRAs are automatically deployed as and when they're needed by the, the amount or the size of replication you're doing. And we only need one Zerto Cloud Appliance now to scale to thousands of virtual machines. Whereas before we'd need multiple ZCAs, you'd, you know, you'd have multiple management consoles and multiple layers of management to deal with that scale. Now you need one manager and the replication underneath is scaled out independently of man. And they're Linux-based VRA appliances as well. There's a zero touch deployment and there's such a small surface area of attack. We're, we're min really minimizing our footprint in, in, um, in AWS for you, for, for management to make sure it's secure as possible. So hopefully you see that you know is a really great thing to to come. We're, we're essentially mirroring 
our architectures as closely as possible for all platforms to make it easier for you guys to to install and and deploy because it, it's, it's hopefully is the kind of the concepts stay the same you know zerto virtual manager no matter where you are is for management and replication appliance no matter where you are is for replication and hopefully separating those out um, across those different platforms make it it makes it easier to manage but also gives the the advantages that we have here today as well so so that was aws so inside of azure we've now had have our linux zerto cloud appliance so as we mentioned earlier the zerto virtual manager appliance for you know the vmware environment we've now bought the linux version so the linux zerto cloud appliance into the marketplace for your for your availability and we've got two flavors of this so inside the marketplace if you already have licensing with zerto you're already existing zerto customer with licensing and support you can do bring your own licensing through the marketplace um, and if you are a new customer you're looking to purchase zerto you'll be able to transact um, and install zerto through the marketplace yourself as well via, via the, the azure marketplace as well so two ways of purchase or, or two ways of installing if you have your own licensing choose to bring your own licensing option if you don't you can transact purchasing and installing via the marketplace as well um, and at the moment if you are interested in that option please speak to your account manager and your account team to help you guide you through that process because it's, it's new to everybody right so you want to make sure that it goes as smoothly as possible for you and then based upon previous conversations you can see a trend here we're trying to mirror everything we do in the vmware platform or the on-premises on platform into the cloud as well so bringing the the linux appliance into the cloud well guess what we've now bought a linux migration utility into the cloud as well so it was going to help you migrate your windows based cloud appliances into a new um cloud appliance there and um i would just make sure that when you if you are planning to do that um, look at the prerequisites. Um, that QR code on the screen right now will take you directly to the um, migration prerequisites for, for Azure. Um, so please make sure that you, you look at that beforehand. Um, there are quite, not stringent, but make sure, you, make sure you know what you need to do before you try and migrate, because there are some changes in architecture, if we, as we've mentioned previously. So you wanna make sure that we've, you know, you're covered on that front as well. So I'll leave this slide up just for a couple of, of a couple of minutes. Well, maybe not even that, 30, 40 seconds, just so people who want to get out their phones and get the link can do. Um, so I'll be quiet just for another 10 or 15 seconds so you guys can scan that and then we'll move on to the next update. Chris, I'll use this pause to let you know that I did get my audio working correctly. Oh, amazing, David. That's nice. music to my ears. Perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. And on that note, we'll we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the next slide. Um, so hopefully, hope, there's some there's some people on the call. If you're if you're seasoned Zerto people um, and and VMware admins and things, there'll be some hallelujahs on the call and some some cheers. Um, so Zerto now has integration with the vSphere Lifecycle Manager. So we can help you update the Zerto appliances through Lifecycle Manager. It simplifies that global maintenance um, on the vSphere level through that vSphere Lifecycle Manager, which is pretty much what most large scale customers use to, to you know, to, to manage the lifecycle of their vSphere environment, right? They use the tool from, from the vendor, which absolutely makes sense. So we're actually gonna be able to push updates for the Zerto Virtual Manager and the replication appliances um, through lifecycle manager as well which is really really helpful um but also fully supported for you know the moving of the virtual machine shutdown hosts and all those kind of things that the lifecycle manager um does for you guys so um kind of a, a small thing um when you when you look at it on paper but actually will help massively in in especially some of the larger customer bases that we do have um but even if you've got a small a small environment really really helpful tool um and it's great that we now support that and again, I mentioned about the upgrade process for the Zerto Virtual Manager appliance. You know, if you're used to the Windows way of upgrading, which was, you know, go to the My Zerto page, go to the Downloads page, download the latest update, copy it to the ZVM, run the XE, da 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 da, -da. Very lengthy process, took time, copying data and files from A to B, backing it up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we've done now is we made it even simpler. So the first iteration of the Zerto Virtual Manager appliance, the upgrades were done via CLI. Um, Again, relatively easy, you know, and a few commands to do that. Um, but now even easier inside of the management appliance. Um, inside of the management appliance, we've now got this management um, upgrade option. So essentially, hey, two clicks and we can be upgraded. It tells you what your current version is, tells you um, that the, uh, what your next version is, 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 uh, is available if it's applicable to you. And we also have the, the backup 
before upgrade option available there as well. So absolutely great, simple to do, should speed up upgrades and make sure you get the latest um, and greatest as, as, as quickly as you can. And as I mentioned right at the top of the, the webinar, because we're releasing every quarter now, you will see the cadence of your release and upgrades become quicker. So you know every quarter, hopefully you'll want to upgrade and get the new, the new features and functionality that we're releasing and obviously making it um, simpler and easier to upgrade. It's going to be going to be um, going to be very very simple to do. And then inside of AWS, so Zerto in cloud for AWS, one of our products that replicates EC2 instances from zone or region A to, to region B or whatever it may be in inside of inside of AWS. Um, we can now replicate and protect UFE or UEFI um, instances, um, protected across multiple regions and zones. Um, and this is really to bring. Um, parity with our core Zerto product from replicating, you know, from VMware into AWS, we can replicate um, UEFI virtual machines. So it's just to bring parity to that that platform. It's one of the things that our customers have said, you know, once I've migrated or protected into AWS, I then want to use Zerto in cloud for AWS to protect those such machines cross region, right? So, and and that wasn't really possible until until this release. So um, another great thing that we're releasing for our customers just to be able to kind of reprotect those virtual machines once they've if they have migrated using Zerto, um, you know, from VMware onto AWS, be able to reprotect those with UEFI support. Um, and that's all of my updates. I'm going to pass over to David to kind of cover the um, the HP GreenLake for disaster recovery updates and the other um, products and products in the the HP portfolio. Um, so as I mentioned, please put your questions in the chat. I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. Um, and we'll get to some of them and read the best ones out at the end as well and, and make sure everyone is aware of what's been asking. So I'll hand it over to you, David, and um, hopefully we'll have some great questions at the end. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. And uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is David Paquette. I'm a product marketing manager at Zerto. Uh, but today I'm going to be talking to you about HP GreenLake for disaster recovery and HP GreenLake for backup and recovery, uh, two products within the GreenLake platform. You can see here the GreenLake platform it's really a, a huge platform with a number of different services uh, related to all aspects of infrastructure and IT services. Uh, up there highlighted, um, you can see in the upper left uh, are the backup and recovery service and the disaster recovery services, which are part of the cloud data services portion of the GreenLake platform. And those are going to be uh, also found in the cloud data services, I'm sorry, the data services cloud console. So we'll talk a little bit more about that as we uh, go through here. But the first one I want to talk about of these two is GreenLake for disaster recovery. So you can go to the next slide. Yeah, so GreenLake for disaster recovery, as many of you know, is uh, Zerto being integrated into the GreenLake platform. Uh, but it is not, uh, we're not going for exactity uh, with Zerto. In fact, we are going above and beyond uh, what Zerto provides, particularly in the context of uh, the management interface and providing more global management services on top of those Zerto capabilities of continuous data protection, automation, orchestration, non-disruptive testing, all the things uh, that you love about Zerto uh, being built into that platform, but also adding on to it a number of uh, additional management capabilities. And that's what we're going to talk about today in some of the updates that we have for you for Q4. So can you go to the next? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so the first thing is this resilience score, which we have built into uh, the global dashboard that's been added uh, into the data services cloud console. And this is sort of a gamification of um, the visibility of the, the DR readiness and resilience for uh, those those workloads that are being protected, particularly in the protection groups that have been created for them. And so each protection group is going to have its own resilience score, but then all of those are going to be aggregated up into a single resilience score that represents the readiness and resilience across the entire uh, global uh, environment that is uh, being managed within that uh, data services cloud console. And so that score is based on a score out of 100. Uh, can you go back? And as you can kind of see down there at the bottom of the uh, the screenshot that we provided, uh, you know, for each of those uh, particular virtual groups or protection virtual protection groups uh, that are being shown there, 
uh, those that uh, have a score that's less than 100 have a recommendation on how that particular uh, protection group may uh, need to be managed in order to bring that score up. So right now, um, you know, it is, uh, as I said, an aggregate score based on all those different protection groups. But if you drill down uh, further in, you do get those suggestions on, on what needs to be done to those protection groups and how to bring that score up. And that score, you know, can be used uh, as part particularly of a, a not just reporting uh, for what uh, your data protection readiness is, but also uh, simply as a measurement of your SLA capabilities um, based on how you want to uh, to view that score for either overall or for those particular protection groups. Okay, next. Okay, another thing that we've done with uh, the Green Lake for Disaster, or HP Green Lake for Disaster Recovery, is to simplify some of the VPG, the virtual protection group states, uh, the view of those states within the console. So because there can be so many virtual protection groups being managed uh, in this global interface, uh, you know, we wanted to simplify those states so it's much easier to uh, see what those states are uh, quickly and to filter based on those states uh, so that you can uh, quickly identify which of those uh, VPGs may need to, to be looked at more closely and then to be able to drill down into those uh, VPGs uh, where the states indicate that there may be a, a warning or an error on those states. So we've really uh, just tried to simplify the, the number of different states and uh, the visibility of the states within the console to make it easier to manage. Next. And again, going with that theme of, you know, improving the management uh, globally uh, rather than, uh, you know, through a, a single Zerto virtual manager or a single site management, um, you know, we've added in the ability to centralize all of the log collection from, you know, all the different sites that are being managed by the cloud console uh, from uh, from that global management interface. So this really, uh, you know, helps bring all that information together to help quickly troubleshoot issues from a single point of management. Okay, so that was all the updates I had for uh, Green Lake for disaster recovery. But we're going to go ahead and move on to Green Lake for backup and recovery. So if you're not too familiar with Green Lake for backup and recovery, this is uh, <clears throat> adjacent to Zerto. So it's not using uh, the Zerto technologies under the hood. It has its own a set of backup technologies that are being used, but it is part of the data protection suite of products that are being offered within GreenLake. So it is adjacent to what we're doing uh, with Zerto in the HP GreenLake platform. It is a, you know, a backup and recovery as a service solution that is uh, very easy to use, uh, extremely efficient, highly scalable, and highly secure. And, the, one of the key things about this solution is it not only protects uh, assets, uh, whether they're VMs or uh, volumes, et cetera, on premises, but it also protects a number of different assets within the cloud, uh, right now within the AWS cloud. But as you can see from some of the updates I'm about to show you, um, we're continuing to add more and more backup capabilities uh, to this platform in order to back up more uh, both on-premises and cloud-based uh, assets that you may have. So go ahead, next. Before we get into those updates, I just wanted to highlight, you may have seen this in the news already, but um, HP GreenLake for Backup and Recovery received the highest overall score and therefore won a product of the year in the category of data protection management and resiliency um, from CRN. So for the products of the year for 2023, um, GreenLake for Backup and Recovery uh, was recognized. And it was recognized for a lot of the things I just talked about, simplifying that hybrid cloud protection, both on-premises and within the cloud, and being able to secure all that data wherever it happens to reside, and all the automation and simplicity that's built into uh, the solution for that. And this is a, a, a product of the year award that's based on uh, partners uh, rating this. Um, so thank you to all the partners that helped us achieve this uh, this award. All right, next. All right, getting into the actual uh, product updates. And the first one, or the first two that I'm gonna talk about are 
uh, based on uh, uh, AWS. So if you uh, look at that screenshot there, there's a highlighted area which shows a number of different things which can be protected within AWS, from EBS storage to EC2 instances, and now we've added EKS clusters as well. Um, and if you, there's a QR code there on the left, and if you scan that, it will uh, take you to a video uh, demonstration of this protection. But this is a, an agentless solution that's very easy to use to back up uh, an entire Kubernetes cluster that's running uh, within EKS. Um, it really helps you achieve the ability to back up and recover applications that are running in that uh, environment, not just in production, but also for um, development purposes so you can back up any of that uh any of those eks clusters that are running within eks using this uh backup and recovery solution and it backs up the entire cluster and it can back it up using both um well, and or aws snapshots uh locally or it can back up that data to an hp cloud protection store which is stored in a, a separate s3 bucket within aws so there are a number of different options for how that data can be uh, backed up and stored uh, when you are using the backup and recovery service from GreenLake. So next, all right, another um, one of the things that we've added into AWS is the ability to protect uh, RDS or relational database. The relational database service um, within AWS. So any of those uh, databases that are running within that RDS service. Um, you can now use native uh, AWS snapshots, whether they're scheduled or on demand, and that uses both a full and then incremental following of snapshot methodology to protect all of those uh, databases that you uh, select for backup uh, within AWS. So uh, any of the accounts that you want to add that have uh, databases uh, that need to be protected, it can protect any of those managed databases within the console. Pardon me. I'm I'm just getting a little over a little bit of a cold last week, so I'm a little bit uh, congested still, but I'm gonna do my best here. All right, uh, there are, again, there's another, sorry, can you go back there real quick and just hold it for a few seconds? Uh, again, there's a demo video there if you wanna quickly scan that QR code in the, the left-hand side of the, of the slide. Uh, that's a, another great demo video just for uh, how a backup and recovery service will back up those uh, RDS databases. All right, moving on. All right, in addition to the RDS, we also have, uh, have added the protection of uh, Microsoft SQL databases. So instead of targeting, for example, an entire virtual machine uh, to protect you know, a, a SQL uh, database that may be running on that virtual machine, in this case, uh, the service can go more granularly in, you know, backup databases uh, within those virtual machines uh, targeting the uh, database and the log files associated with it uh, to back those up on a more granular basis. Again, this is an agentless solution. There's no need to install or maintain any agents um, within any, any of the virtual machines or in the hypervisor. Um, and it has support uh, for uh, databases, whether you're running in a a failover cluster, or if you have set up SQL uh, server availability groups, you know, the always on portion of SQL, um, we can still protect those individual databases. And it still allows you to use uh, protection policies and protection groups uh, for the transaction log protection of those databases. So, next. I think this might be the last one for um, the uh, backup and recovery service, but uh, this is a, an exciting one because you can now just protect individual volumes on the managed uh, storage arrays within the data service cloud console. So storage, which has been um, uh, added in to be managed within that console, um, you can select that storage uh, and select individual volume from that storage, those storage arrays, in order to back up those particular volumes. And again, um, you can do scheduled or uh, on-demand snapshots, and then um, you can do either on-premises backups or you can do uh, backups to the cloud uh, into that protection store. 
And there you can also alternately uh, restore, if you are uh, going to restore those volumes back, you can restore them either to the same array in which they were protected or to a different array within the same family of storage arrays. So it gives you a lot of options, both for protection and recovery of those volumes. All right, I think that's it for the updates for Q4. Um, if you want to see some of these things firsthand, you can start um, with Zerto. We have a number of different ways that you can uh, see. Um, we have recorded both recorded demos and you can, uh, of course, do a live demo for you if needed. But one of the best ways is just to get into our Zerto uh, hands-on labs and uh, see for yourself, uh, you know, what what Zerto is all about, what some of these new features are all about. Um, and then, of course, you can uh, always ask for a free trial. And of course, there are plenty of reviews out there uh, to get more information. Uh, for Green Lake for disaster recovery, um, there is a, a couple of QR codes here. One is to a demo on the left. Uh, you can, of course, uh, test drive both the, just the Green Lake platform itself, but more specifically, uh, HP Green Lake for disaster recovery. Uh, there's a preview that you can sign up for, uh, which is uh, effectively a free trial of uh, that solution. Um, so you can try that out for yourself as well. That's a QR code for that on the right. And then finally, for Green Lake for backup and recovery, um, you can get started with a 90-day uh, free trial of Green Lake for backup and recovery. So it gives you a lot of time to evaluate and try out uh, the backup and recovery. Uh, and you may need that time because there are just so many different things that uh, the backup and recovery service uh, can back up both on-premises and within the cloud uh, that uh, will definitely keep you busy evaluating it uh, for quite some time. But um, you can uh, request that just by scanning that QR code below and then uh, we can get you set up with a, a, with a free trial. And of course, there's a, a number of different videos, uh, which some of which I've already uh, linked for you there in the QR codes earlier. Uh, but there's a ton more information online uh, that you can look at. All right, I think that uh, wraps it up. We can probably go to some questions here. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, David, for that, for those. Uh... I think really, really comprehensive updates from, especially from the from the from the Green Lake um, for DR and, and Green Lake for the, for the backup and recovery piece there. Some some really you know needle needle shifting uh, releases there and, and some cool stuff to to try out. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got a couple of cool questions. So if you have any questions, um, please put them into the Q and A box now, and we'll get through to some of them. Um, in the next you know five or five minutes or so. Um, but I have got some 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 great questions already coming in. Um, so the first one, I mean, I can take this one, um, and then maybe David, I can ask you um, a couple more as well. Um, so, so how does Zerto 10 detect suspicious activity, um, which is encrypted your system, and how can it determine the exact point in time? So, so how Zerto does it is essentially inside of the virtual replication appliance, which is the the data mover of Zerto. We've essentially created um, a feature or an out, you know, a functionality in there that analyzes the blocks as we're as we're replicating them. So, as the blocks that have changed flow into the virtual replication appliance, we analyze those based upon a previous learning activity we have for your environment. So we kind of understand what the environment looks like, and 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 then roughly know what what normal. I'm going to say normal in air quotes. No, obviously no one can see me, but <laughs> uh, normal in air quotes looks like for your environment. And then if that changes, so if we suddenly see a big spike in encrypted blocks going through the VRAs, we'll then essentially send you an alert inside the console or via API, however you've decided to receive those alerts to say, oh, we think there's some suspicious activity happening in the environment, we should check that out. And because Zerto is uh, replicating in near real time, that essentially every block that comes through we're analyzing, and that's how we determine the point in time. So as, as that block flows through in near real time, we're essentially saying that that checkpoint there that we're going to put into the journal, we think is suspicious. Obviously, it may be suspicious, it may not be. We're not doing anything to say we're gonna stop replication or do any automated actions. It's We're essentially raising the earliest warning system that something might be wrong in your environment. You know, and we don't have to wait for the the, the backups that you're doing every night to complete and then be analyzed and indexed and, and search for malicious activity. We're doing it in near real time. 
So we're giving that, as I said, that earliest warning system so you might be wrong in your environment. And that's what it's designed to do is give you the best chance of capturing something before it spreads too far, that it becomes quite a catastrophic event. Um, and, and I suppose if, if I've got a couple of minutes to explain it, we're actually detecting um, and can detect in which volume in the VM it, it, it encrypted, which VM and then which application it is as well. So we're giving you that kind of information to, to know where to hunt first. You know, if you see a timestamp of application 01, VM1, volume 1, that's where you're going to start hunting for payload and things like that to be able to start looking at where, where how to cleanse data as well. So we're giving you a much better way of doing things in a much quicker um, period of time as well, rather than just post backup. Um, so, so David, um, will there be plans for a vendor agnostic vaulting um, so we don't have to replace storage rays, et cetera, that we currently oh. own? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, part of the reason why we've selected, um, well, a couple of reasons why we've selected the hardware that we've selected for the, the current vault is because of the key capabilities uh, within those uh, HP Electro storage arrays and the versatility of the Aruba networking. Uh, you know, you could, of course, create a vault with other types of storage hardware uh, and networking uh, hardware, switches, et cetera. Uh, but we were keying in on some key features within the HP Elytra uh, storage replication, which uh, provided uh, an enhanced level of security. So there was a zero trust architecture uh, built into those replication capabilities within the Elytra storage. And um, we had the ability to manage that storage replication from the target array uh, to keep it completely isolated and air gapped. Um, you know, across a dedicated fiber channel connection between the two arrays. One of the other uh, key elements uh, of that is keeping the storage and the compute hardware identical on both sides um, in terms of the vendor uh, models, et cetera, because that helps us bring up the VMware environment much more quickly when we're bringing it up from the, the data stores that are being replicated across on the HP Electra storage. So there are a number of factors which you know require uh, you know specific hardware being used within the vault, and that's why we packaged it, packaged it as we did because uh, we were able then to uh, verify uh, that it worked uh, the way we intended it to. That does not mean that you could not uh, build out a similar vault in in on other hardware in a similar way. It just may not have some of the same capabilities that we've combined together for the, the Zerto Cyber Resilience Ball. Yeah, yeah great so, answer, David. One, yeah. one thing I would just like to add to that as well is you don't, you don't have to replace, rip and replace everything you own, right? The Vault is an, is an add-on to what you currently have. So even if I'm a, you know, have a third party storage array that I'm using for Zerto today, right? You can still add a Vault on to that and still use Zerto as you're currently using it today. Because remember, we have this one-to-many architecture available, so we can use what you're currently replicating and then add another replication copy to the vault um, and to that landing zone. So um, obviously I don't have the slide <laughs> up on the screen right now, but we're giving you the landing zone and we give you the vault um, hardware as well. So you know if you've got a current DR site that's maybe, you know, somewhere else, you can, you purchase the vault, you get the landing zone hardware, uh, obviously and Zerto and the vault um, hardware and software as part of the package. Um, so you don't have to rip and replace your current DR strategy with Zerto. You can add this on as an additional functionality because we are giving you that landing zone compute and storage and the compute storage networking inside the vault as well. So you don't have to rip and replace everything. That's a great point. Thank you. No, perfect. You answered you answer the first bit as, as, as better as best as I've heard it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, we had another question, which is pretty much identical. You know, is search position being storage agnostic? Um, will will this change uh, moving forward with uh, with the the storage in the vault? Obviously, we just answered that. But Zerto is still storage agnostic. Um, I just want to make that point: is that we, you know, you can still use all the functionality that we've said from Zerto today. Um, the encryption detection, all of that kind of stuff, still still works on any hardware. Um, you know, we we, we haven't <laughs> we haven't locked anyone out. Um, so all that stuff still works. It's just the vault. Um, and as David so elegantly put it, we, you know, we've packaged it up. So you're buying the whole package. You're not just buying hardware and software on one item, right? You're getting professional services to install and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's maintained and verified 
by us as a complete solution rather than just a collection of hardware and software. Um, to do, uh, does GreenLake for disaster recovery require the customer use HP assets or can a customer use third party assets like Dell, et cetera? Um, do you want to take that one, David? Uh, yeah, as, as far as I understand, you can use other types of, uh, it doesn't have to be built on HP uh, hardware. It can be built on other third party hardware. Uh, really, the idea behind the GreenLake platform is to you know, make it a global management platform that can manage you know, all of your on-premises infrastructure as well as your cloud infrastructure you know, from a, a single viewpoint. Uh, certainly, you know, as being part of HP, we want to sell you HP hardware and other software services. Uh, but uh, those other uh, hardware uh, infrastructure components that you may already have in place uh, can be managed under the uh, HP GreenLake platform. Yeah, I do. Right, so I think we're going to do last question so we can let everyone kind of get on with the, the rest of their day, whether it's logging off for the day or getting lunch or, you know, going into the afternoon. Um, so um, this is to do with the in encryption detection piece again. Um, so it says CERTA is not using a wide variety of databases with exploits, but use learning by analyzing patterns um, whilst transpiring through the VRA. Absolutely right. So we aren't looking at signatures or anything else like that. We're literally looking at the block level to see if encryption has has changed over the over the course of um, our learning period. Um, so inside of inside of Zerto, we're going to learn, and then we're going to analyze, and then we're going to detect, and then respond um, or, or alert, depending on on what you've chosen. The the great beauty of this is because we're not using you know, signature or, or a database with exploits that are known, we're doing it on purely, you know, at the block layer. If it's a zero day attack and it's not a known thing, well, guess what? It doesn't actually matter to us. It doesn't matter if the exploit's <laughs> been around for, for 20 years or, or 20 seconds. If it's if it encrypts your data and it looks out of the ordinary, we'll, we'll flag it for you. So it, it's a great way of us being able to tell you that. Um, and yes, it happens inside of the VRA. Um, before we before we've even sent data to the secondary site, we've already analyzed it as source site. So if you only had a one site architecture, you can still use encryption detection as well. It doesn't have to be um, at the at the secondary site. And then I'm going to roll in one more question into that whilst we're talking about encryption detection, um, which is um, if VMs are already encrypted, does it affect continuous replication? No, um, we replicate the data. So if if you know if, if there are encryption events that are the legitimate right um you know if you if you have a big file share and you decide to compress it all down and, and put a password on it and, and, and encrypt that data that will, will, will potentially flag that data as looking abnormal right because you know before it wasn't encrypted and now there is now encrypted data will potentially flag that to you and say you know this doesn't look like it's what what, what the normal is for your environment um obviously then as an administrator you can say, oh yeah that's fine because dave has just encrypted led data on the server so that, that's no problem we can we can mark that as okay um but equally if there is um a bad event then we'll tell you about it as well so we're look, we're kind of looking at it from all, all aspects as well um so hopefully i think that answers every um every question we have uh thanks for your, your great questions really good to have some some nice um interaction with everybody um and until next time, hopefully, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Um, my name is Chris Rogers and then David uh, Paquette as well. So thank you, Dave, for joining us and joining, or joining me or me joining you. I'm not sure which one it was, but <laughs> thank you for, for joining us. Um, and yeah, look out for the next invite, which shouldn't be too far away for, for um, other upcoming webinars um, and enjoy um, your holiday season wherever you are in the world. Thank you very much.